I guess we're gonna do a video, right, Jeff? Yeah, let's do a video. All right. What is up, everybody? I'm here with my brother-in-law, David Evans. Hey, John. Who are you? Uh, I, <laughs> I'm Dave Evans. I am a paleontologist at the Royal Ontario Museum. World I famous. I study dinosaurs for a living, and I get to travel the world and go on dinosaur digs. Nice. So, what are you doing here in our shop? This is the first time you've been here. It's the first time I've been to the shop, and I'm bringing back my Norseman that you gave me about four or five years ago. Yeah, it says March 2013 on the inside. Uh, and you gave it to me specifically uh, as a dinosaur digging knife. Dug up all sorts of dinosaurs with it, uh, crocodiles in the Sahara, triceratops in, in uh, South Dakota. So it's, it's uh, nice. seen quite a bit of, uh, of, of dirt and seen quite a bit of wear and tear. Yeah, it's, it's like the ultimate test. I mean, I don't know if there is a Norseman out there that's seen more abuse because um, a lot of guys see this as an art knife, and you see it as a tool, and that's why I yeah. gave it to you, so that you could you could brutal testing, you know, yeah, like torture testing. Yeah, what I really like about the Norseman specifically um, is that it doesn't have a sharply pointed blade; that it has a rounded blade. What did you just use before this? So what I used before this was a classic Swiss Army knife, and we actually use knives to dig a lot more than you'd think. You might yeah. think that from the movies or something, we use uh, like, like chisels, chisels and hammers and, yeah. or something like that. But actually in the soft rock that, uh, of like the latest Cretaceous, more like T-Rex and Triceratops is, is from, uh, that's the rock I usually dig in. It's actually pretty soft and we use knives more than any other tool when we're excavating dinosaurs. Um, but I was never satisfied with Swiss Army knives. The uh, tip would actually always break. So I would go through a bunch of knives um, and have gone through a bunch over the years. And when you showed me the Norseman you're working on, I thought, you know, this could be a really good design for digging through rock. And I think it took me a little while to twist your arm to give me one. Yeah, it took a while. But we've got number 94, so relatively early in our uh, our career. Uh, but yeah, I think you, you specified sharp recurve part, but a dull tanto because it's gonna be digging with it. Yeah, so we dig through rock and it's held up really well. Um, over the over the years, we've dug a lot in in various conditions, from the driest you can possibly get in uh, in the Sahara Desert, to actually digging a triceratops basically out of a pond. And so this knife spent the majority of two field seasons like underwater, um, which I don't think most knives would hold up to very well. But nor, nor would most knife owners do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's held up amazingly well. I mean, I brought it back in after that first summer, and yeah. it was a little rough. The bearings. Yeah, and we were using stainless steel bearings that they, they rusted, no surprise. So I think we were at, your mom's pool, at the swimming pool and I took apart my knife, took out the ceramic bearings, put them in this knife, good to go. And it hasn't, it's been perfect ever since. So, it's like, awesome. those ceramic bearings have really helped. And I think one year we were talking and uh, I told you that what I like to do with my knives is when I'm out in the field prospecting, looking for new dinosaur skeletons. Um, I usually throw my knife down because I always have it in my pocket at hand right. as a scale bar for uh, for fossils in the field. Okay, define what a scale bar is. So a scale bar is just like a ruler that tells tells us how big the uh, the fossil is in the picture that we take. Because when you see a picture of a rock, you have no frame of reference. You have That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you're just usually zooming right in on the rock face right. where the fossil is. So I asked you to customize my handle, and you put a really nice 10 centimeter scale bar in there for me. Closer video. And uh, this knife has been in, geez, most of my field photos of fossils. Uh, it actually is in a couple of journal articles that are soon to be published <laughs> because when I'm out there in the field, it's, uh, it's, it's important information to, for, uh, for readers of, different, uh, of our science to see what the fossil look like in the field. And usually when I'm taking pictures of fossils in the field, I've got, uh, I've got my Norseman in the, in the frame. So that was a great addition. So this is really my perfect dinosaur digging knife. That's so nice. So thanks for it. No problem. But it's good to see you come back. Like, so Eric, give me the, uh, the the breakdown review. How's it holding up? Um, won't cut anything. <clears throat> but other than that, like, but you, know, you, can, you can tell it's really dirty, but it flips with no wrist flip. And 
definitely does not drop. <coughs> Well, he probably hasn't seen lubricant in like four years. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. Pretty dry. It's impressive mm -hmm. that it's still... You can see all the dirt caked on the blade in there. And the finish has worn off on the handle. It used to be like a, a, a bronze color, and it's gone. Yeah. And I've lost a screw. Just hoping you guys could, yeah. could, no could, could, uh, could hook me back up with another screw. I could definitely use a good, like, good clean and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a lube, and definitely a shirt. Yeah. But yeah, it goes with me everywhere in the field. It's always in my pocket. Most of my field clothes are like, they have the, the worn. Yeah, yeah. What were you saying about your uh, the entrance? Oh yeah, so, you know, it flips so nice that when you're out in the field, it's hard when you find a fossil not to just want to, you know, be like, oh, what is this? And just flip the <laughs> flip the knife open. And, and all, my, uh, all my students who come through are just so impressed by it. And so they usually want to play with the, play with the knife <laughs> and so I, I usually hold it at ransom, like, oh, if you know, carry a few more bags of plaster or whatever. If you do a good job today, I like to play with the knife at the end of the day. They're usually pretty happy when uh, when they get to do it. Yeah, no, it's a beauty. I, uh, it's been uh, it's been everywhere. Dug up some great dinosaurs, and we'll continue to dig up more. That's awesome. Yes, quick little clean and sharpen, and it's not brand new, but it's almost brand new. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's fantastic to see. I mean, we work really hard to make knives meant to last a lifetime or longer. I, I don't know. Like, we have no idea. We've only been doing this for six years. And to see one with such abuse, you know, maybe 10 or 20 years of normal person abuse. Yeah. Um, or maybe more. Or maybe I mean, more. Like, who knows? I feel a bit like your product tester. I mean, it's I, good. Like, I literally spend months a year jamming it into rock. <laughs> <laughs> who out there is cringing right now? And it holds up really well. I mean, I'm really impressed at the at the blade, like how well that blade holds yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say respect to Dama Steel and RWL 34. Yep. Yeah, this was an acid etched blade. You can see it's mostly worn off, but so can't quite tell if that's rust yeah. or dirt or blood yeah. or something. <laughs> but I mean, I I use it as a tool. Yeah. And that's, so that's what it is, right? Uh, but it puts up with all the abuse and then some. It's always nice for it to come in for a bit of a spa treatment every yeah. couple of years. But it'll last forever. I mean, I don't think I don't think I could put it through much more abuse than I have. <laughs> it still needs to dig up a T Rex though one one day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it actually was a. It actually has dug up with several new dinosaurs. Norse Ceratops. Yeah. <laughs> when uh, Wendy Ceratops, and that was on the History Channel, which was pretty cool. So we I used this night to dig up uh, that new horned dinosaur, relative yeah. with Triceratops, yeah. and yeah, and I think it actually was even in the TV show. Nice. <laughs> What was the name of that show? Uh, Dino Hunt Canada. Dino Hunt Canada. Yeah, somebody commented on Instagram. They're like, they're like, I was watching this show on Netflix about dinosaurs, and I saw a Norseman. Yeah, it's making the rounds now. It just got on Netflix in the U.S., so yeah. I think that's yeah. Yeah, it's more and more people are seeing it. So yeah, I know. So that go check it out. Fun. Yeah, definitely go check it out. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Uh, what else do you want to see while you're here? Uh, I want to see the I want to see some of the new rap the new rats with the Tabascus. Uh, I haven't I seen have one for you. many of those. Are your hands clean? Ah, oh, they're pretty clean. All right, Eric can uh, demonstrate. Is his, are his hands clean? No. No. Okay. So this is one we're literally waiting to hear back from the guy, just oh, to make sure wow. he still lives in the same place. Um, yeah, this is a Timascus Damasteel Rask. It's got all the options, basically. Wow. It's like gorgeous. Looks like ladder Damascus. Yeah, it might actually be lighter pattern, yeah. That is really beautiful. See, I couldn't dig with this. No, it's too pretty. It's not, it's not the point, right? It's, it's meant to be artwork. Yeah, look at the difference. Right. <laughs> yeah, most people won't even cut anything with that. Yeah, even though it's, it's made to hold up. I mean, it's the same knife as the Norseman, it's, you know, in our build quality and everything. Um, I wouldn't, you know, I'd be careful with the tip, the tip of the rack, yeah. obviously. But it's the Norseman is a shovel. That's different purposes. Exactly, yeah. No, so anything where you're prying, which is what we do a lot with the rock in, in a dinosaur dig, this is amazing. Like, you're never going to snap that. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know how many Swiss Army knives I've snapped over right. the years. A lot. I have a feeling this would perform better than a Swiss Army knife. It's just beautiful. Yeah. We're looking forward to getting this guy conditioned. Yeah, we're good. Cool. So here is 
we're assuming that the knife used to be about this color when it was brand new and he's just kind of worn worn it down it's not silver it's just a light worn bronze you can still see it's like kind of almost gold or copper in the pockets yep in the corners so a relatively new norseman wow i almost poked my finger um this is eric's knife dave's knife you can see the blade is uh, quite a bit smaller but still excellent I get dirt into the, the latch and I can't actually get it to close properly. And so what I often do if I can't get it to close properly, I just like put water in a, in a water bottle or in the bottom of a plaster bin and I just throw it into the water and I leave it overnight. And then the next day, usually the mudstone or whatever is in there is softened up enough that I can clean it out and use it again. It's <laughs> hilarious. It really holds up to the water amazingly well. I love it. I don't want to leave it, John. You're going to miss it. I will miss it. I don't want to leave it, but you said you're going to put a new coat on the handle. Yeah, we'll that. anodize it again for you. Yeah, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to see it brought back to life. Yep. So, there she is. Boom! Already anodized. <laughs> Dave's knife just about finished. Eric has done his tumbling, anodizing. The blade is almost done. Uh, I just have to engrave the word Evans on the clip right here. But um, check out the two-tone color of the uh, lettering. It's like blue inside, which we did not expect. So we must have made this knife blue at some point and then stripped it back to silver and then made it bronze. And somehow this blue came back out again. I'm very surprised, but it actually looks really, really awesome. So the bearings that he's had in his knife for a few years now are just trashed. They're like dirty and gritty and they feel terrible. So we're gonna put some new ones in there because like you said earlier, they've just been full of mud and sandstone and everything. So putting new bearings in, breathe new life into the knife. This is not something that should be replaced normally, but for him, Dave's knife, all done. Check this out. Silver Evans engraving on the clip. This looks so cool. The scale bar kind of anodized in. Uh, gave it a re-anodizing. Everything looks awesome. For a knife that is almost five years old, I'm super duper impressed. I love it. Now we'll see what he says on Christmas morning. Screws are back in. Isn't that nice? Smooth as ice. Isn't that nice? Eh? That's got a new uh, new coat on it. Wow! Boys, it's amazing. The boys worked hard to give you another four years. Put it in. Right? Wait, where it belongs? Oh, that looks so sick. Man, that's, that's cool, awesome. eh? You can read this. You can see. I uh, I use it. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that is so awesome. Good. Just dinosaurs. We've got them hooked now.